Hey everyone, Slightly here. This is going to be a walkthrough tutorial on how to set up Slightly Ball in Unity. Now if you need help performing it in-game, be sure to check out the in-game usage tutorial as well as the separate demo reel performance showcase video in case you just want to see some of the cool things that you can do with Slightly Ball once you have it in your hands. Now if you have any questions after this video, there's going to be a full documentation on GitHub with every single technical detail about how the script works, how the tool works, and every single option, as well as a frequently asked questions. If you have more questions, be sure to check out the support channel on Discord and ask away. This video is going to be broken up into primarily two parts. We're going to run through the quick basic setup first, just so you can get going. And afterwards, I'm going to go through the full advanced options and details so that you can fully customize the system to your specific needs. If you don't want to stick around the whole time, be sure to check out the description. There's going to be timestamps so you can jump around to wherever you need to go. So let's get started. In order to start with Slightly Ball, there's two ways to sort of pull it into your hierarchy. There is a prefab here you can drag in, but personally, I prefer this option, which is from the toolbar, Slightly Ball. And when you click it, this one will automatically add it to the first active loaded avatar descriptor in your scene. If there is no active avatar descriptor, it'll just add it into the hierarchy on its own. When you click on it and load it for the first time, it's going to try to verify your license. And if you've never activated a license key before, you'll have to enter it here for the first time. Now, this active license key will only be activated and validated if you've already validated it on Discord. So be sure to do that before you stick it in here. Once you activate your license key, you'll never have to do it again as long as you're on the same computer. Doesn't matter what project you're in, any other project will work fine. So let's run through the basic setup real quick. All right, you can ignore this warning for now. It's just warning you that you haven't put in a ball yet. So this system works with literally any game object you want. I can make a sphere and stick it in here if I want to. I can use another avatar if I want to. I can put in a sword. I can put in any object. For this, I'm going to go ahead and use two of the custom balls that I have here. Um, sold separately, <laughs> not included. But when you put in balls into this, you can go ahead and pull them either from your scene or they can be from your project as prefabs as well. So I'm just going to pull one from this hierarchy and one from down here. It'll work the same. All right. You can use the plus or minus here to add more, and you can also rearrange these if you want to change the order of them. Now for ball configuration, this is if, do you want these balls in both of your hands? So you can do dual wielded ball mode, or you can just choose to have it only in your left or right hand. I'm going to keep it on both hands for now. With that, I'm just going to go ahead and hit next step. So after you hit next step, it's going to take you to the second step and the final step where all we have to do is actually just position everything on our avatar. So I'm going to click here on edit hand anchors, and this is where the balls will be attracted to. Now, if you can't see them, just go ahead and click on edit ball size to show one of the balls temporarily. And we're just going to use these handles to pull it out. Now you'll notice by default, these are symmetrical. So if I move one, it'll move the other. If you don't want it to be symmetrical, just uncheck this box and you can move them separately. I'm going to do this symmetrically because my avatar is symmetrical and I'm going to put it right about there. All right. Now head anchor is going to be where in space the ball is controlled by your head. You can move this if you'd like to. Otherwise, the tool will try to automatically calculate the optimal spot for you. If you need to see what the ball looks like, just disable your hand anchors one and the anchors will just show in order the balls where they're at. See. I'm going to leave my head anchor as is. Notice that there are these white arrows. You're going to want to make sure they're always pointed away from your, your avatar. So your hand anchor ones should be pointed away. Your head anchor ones should be pointed away. This will be the direction in which the distance scales when you use ball distance. Orbit radius. This is going to be the radius in which the balls orbit around your body. So if you want to increase or decrease it, there's these dots on the sphere that you can scale up or down. Ball size, you can edit each ball size individually. And as you click on them, it'll show them independently. So if I wanted to, I can click on one and I can use this sort of handle to grow it bigger or smaller. And it also works with undo, so I'm going to control Z. And if I select more than one at once, I can use this field here in order to scale them all at once as well. 
Lastly, there is an edit physics collider size. And what this physics collider size is, this is the radius that the balls will actually bounce with. So you want to typically align this physics collider, which may be a little hard to see at the current size we have because it's already so close. Um, it'll try to auto calculate the best it can. But you want this physics collider to match the radius or the scale of the smallest ball that you have. So I'm going to put mine like right about here. And just like that, hit complete setup and it will generate all the animations and all the 3.0 and you are done. That is it. You are now good to upload. All of this has been generated for you. These are the balls themselves. This is the hierarchy that is generated for you. You will now notice all the parameters will be automatically added. You'll notice all the menus have been added as well. And as well as all of the FX layers. And there may be a lot depending on what you include. Same thing with the parameters. Just like that, you are good to upload. So let's get into the advanced details, right? Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this drop down at the top again to add it to my avatar again. And this time you'll notice there are options down here for delete from avatar because it detects one already installed or delete from project. So if I hit delete from avatar, it'll remove it from my avatar, but it'll keep the files in the project down here. See where it says generated SP resources. Here's this avatar's generated stuff specifically. If I click delete from project, it's just going to wipe it out of my project entirely. And we're starting over from scratch. Just that easy. So let's go through these settings in a little bit more detail. All right. Now, ball configuration, we've already talked about. Ball modes, you can actually add up to eight different balls. All right. And these will apply to both hands. So you have these same eight in each of your hands. All right. You can use plus or minus, and you can also reorder these. Let's look at additional features here. Now, these are the different features that you can go ahead and include. Ball distance will be the ability to scale the distance from your fingertips outwards by a magnitude of, I believe, 10. Ball strength will be the ability to change how strongly the ball is attracted to your anchors. World constraints will be the ability to drop each of your anchors in world space so that you can kind of walk up, drop your ball, walk away, and then also pass it back and forth between you and those world constrained anchors or to multi between multiple world constrained anchors if you just want to pass it around the entire world. World physics will be if you want to have the ability to enable collision so that the ball can hit surfaces as well as the ability to toggle bouncing, whether or not it bounces off surfaces, and then gravity, if you want the ball to be able to be affected by gravity and fall with gravity. So you can mix those three settings in world physics to have a bunch of cool interactions. Simple control is if you want to have two separate gesture sets, one of which is simpler and doesn't have as many gestures, or if you want to be on advanced control, which is every gesture. So by default, advanced control is seven different gestures. And if that's too much for you to handle sometimes, you can go ahead and, and enable simple control and only have a few to play with and not worry about accidentally firing the wrong gesture. FBT mode adds the option to pass the balls back and forth between your hands and your feet in different ways. And there are multiple FBT modes. We're gonna go through that later on in the advanced options. Pilot mode is the ability to have the ball be piloted like a drone with your menu, and you can fly the ball through the air, up, down, left, right, forward, backwards. All right. So you can enable and disable these, and then go ahead and continue to the next step. But we're going to go ahead and go through these advanced set options as well, just so that you can get a look at what a few of these might do. So by default, Right defaults will try to be automatically calculated for you based on the controls you already have. If there is any sort of mismatch or mixed right defaults, it'll warn you and you have the option to choose it from here. If you want to change the gestures with which you control the ball, there's an option here for remap control gestures. And if I click on that, you'll see this appears down here. We can rearrange any function you want to any other gesture you want just by dragging. And you'll notice these checkboxes are for you to select what is simple or not. If you want to say, hey, while I'm in simple mode, I only want to do these two, 
or these three, or these four, you get to pick and choose. If you don't have simple control, you won't see those options there. Disable facial animations. This will automatically disable any blend shapes on your face, any facial expressions, while you are playing with the balls. This does not account for non-blend shapes, so if you have, for example, a separate tongue, you will need to add that in separately. Be wary of that. Force gesture tracking. This is particularly if you use index controllers or anything with finger tracking, right? And you also have forced animations. So for example, I use index, but my avatar is I also hard code a P sign. So I can do a P sign because index doesn't usually let you do P sign. This will force my hands to go back to doing normal tracking instead of P sign when I'm playing with my balls. That's a weird statement to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, include ball demo mode. This will be the demo mode as shown in the in-game tutorial or showcase, um, where it's more mostly for troubleshooting or demonstration purposes. You often don't really enable this, which is why it's not in additional features. Enable move or copy. What this means is it'll add the option up here so that you can choose out of your inputs whether or not to copy it and put it into your avatar or move the same one that is here in case you have specific references that you want to maintain. Default shoot toggle on and save throw shoot mode. This has to do with shoot toggle if you have it enabled or disabled. But you can choose whether or not to have shoot on by default versus throw on by default and whether or not that should save between worlds or if you want it to reset whenever you switch worlds or avatars. If you have full body mode enabled, you have the exact same configuration for full body here. Default full body mode on or off, and whether or not that should be saved between worlds or avatar loads. Attached to index finger is the balls by default will be bound to your wrist. So if you bend your fingers, the ball will not move. Um, that is a sort of personal preference. I actually prefer that, but a lot of people who have index, for example, like to control it with their index finger. So it's up to you. You can enable this and it'll be bound to your furthermost index finger bone instead. Separate balls per hand is if you actually want to have separate balls per hand. I mean, I guess it's kind of straightforward, but if you are in both hand mode, you can actually have eight different balls per hand for a total of 16 different balls. Not recommended. That's a horrible optimization hit, but you do you. All right. <laughs> and lastly, save control mode right here. This will be whether or not you want to save um, if you're going to be simple or advanced mode when you switch worlds or avatars. Now, for these non checkboxes, we have the type of FT FBT mode you want to set up, whether it's standard or complex. Details on what standard or complex is can be found in the in game tutorial as well as the GitHub documentation. Default control mode, whether or not you want to start on simple or advanced. The starting ball strength, if you have ball strength mode enabled, so that you can choose whether or not to be super weak or super strong. The shoot strength that you will shoot the ball with if you have shoot mode enabled. So by default is 100, but you can get some real fast balls if you shoot them at 250%. And lastly, the speed at which the ball pilots around when you're piloting it, you can choose that as well. So that is all your advanced options. There's a lot. Um, if you have further questions on these, check out the documentation on GitHub. Lastly, down here, save file path. You can choose where the files will create that generated folder if you don't want it to be at this path. Down here will be an automatic calculation of how much memory the system will need or take. So you'll see the maximum is 45, but this can honestly go down to, if you remove all the saves, and also remove anything that uses a float, which is these three. 90% of the system, including 16 balls, all of these features actually fits on only eight memory. There's a lot of memory optimization going on. So this will be the me memory necessary about the system and the available memory on your avatar. And if you have any curiosity in terms of how memory is calculated, again, formulas on the GitHub in case you really want, but no one ever checks those out. Um, so lastly, uh, this is just a warning because I left these blank, but otherwise, let me remove a ton of these and we'll stick two different balls in here. All right. So here's two different balls set to copy and I'm just going to hit next and let it generate. All right. So here's the generation of after setting 
all the other settings up. The only new one you'll have here is edit foot anchors. So if we go to edit foot anchors, you'll see they're down here in the ground in my feet. And because we have separate balls enabled, you'll see there's two separate left and right hand for balls as well as colliders. So I can turn on left ball size specifically, as well as right ball size specifically. So ignore this one in the middle in the ground right there. That's the one that's in the hierarchy right here. But right here we have the left ball size, which I can scale independently, and the right ball size, which I can scale independently. And with the foot anchors, I typically like to put them right above my feet and in front of my ankle at a diagonal, so you can see them. And if you want to scale them independently, you can, right? I'm going to undo that. And they have their respective colliders that you can manipulate as well. So for example, this collider I'm going to bring down to match. And this collider I'm going to bring... That's rotation. Oh, the collider is already on top of it right here. All right? And then just hit complete setup. Now the last thing I want to cover is I'm going to hit Alt S, which is the same shortcut as hitting this to re-add the tool. I'm going to hit delete project again. The last thing I do want to cover um, is right here, this is an auto updater. So you can always check for updates by clicking this button. This will also automatically check once per day, the first time you load it. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to check out our Discord, GitHub documentation, and also here's my store. <laughs> and I hope you like this little personal touch right here as well. With that, thank you. If you have any questions, hit me up. See you all later.